Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys don't already know, I'm Danielle, also known as Main Fashionista. I will link my Instagram below. But I wanted to get on here today, you guys, and talk all things post college tips, tricks, and advice how to navigate the real world and how to help you succeed in finding your first job, your second job, and any job after that. Let's get started. First off, you guys, congratulations, you did it. Four years, you have your degree, whether it's bachelor in arts, science, masters, whether this is like graduate school, whatever it is, you've accomplished it and now you're on to bigger and better things. Let me just start by saying, it is a job finding a job. So, you now graduated, right? You're now with your family, you're now out with friends, you bump into Marcy at the grocery store. Oh, what are you doing? oh you're home oh you're moving into the city you're moving across the country to california sunshine city like whatever it is you're gonna want to have an answer whether you know what that answer is or not you're gonna want to be confident about it now what do i mean by that i mean you're not gonna say to marcy in the grocery store i don't know i just graduated she knows you just graduated everyone knows because of facebook hello mom and dad posted they're so proud of you no this is what you need to do okay you're gonna have a little conversation with yourself and I had this conversation with myself last year. Just graduated, I was about to say high school, college, Danielle. Just graduated college. If you guys don't know, I went to American University in Washington, D.C. Literally, best time of my life. Anyway, we'll get into that another time. And I did not have a job lined up for me when I came home. Now, I know a lot of people do, but there's also a lot of people that don't. So if you're one of those people that don't, you are going to have a plan and you're going to stick to it. And it only matters if you and your close friends or family know. Actually, your friends don't even need to know. You just need to know. So this is what you're going to do. You are going to tell Marcy, oh, I'm pursuing journalism and fashion. Or I'm going to go, go be a coordinator at XYZ's office. You just want to have a plan. And you basically want to sound like a robot and just tell people the same thing. Because it gets exhausting telling people different situations and different stories and it's like who cares like unless you like until you have the job it doesn't matter okay because I'm telling you right now like your parents friends are gonna ask you because they're curious nosy biatches and they want to know what they should do with their kids anyway moving on more importantly you've now applied to jobs okay you are sending your resume out on LinkedIn you're on Indeed you're spending hours you're on your phone hit submit no biggie but there's a biggie because the disconnect is because I was literally in your shoes a year ago. Okay. I was sitting on my couch. I was applying to stuff. Actually, I think I was like at my kitchen table because like I needed to focus more there. You need to have a game plan. Four things. Four things you need to know. Number one, what are you interested in? Write that down on a piece of paper. You need to have a legal notepad, by the way, you guys. If you don't have this, stop. Like pause the video right now. You need this. This is going to be your best friend. You need this gorgeous yellow notepad. I don't care what brand it is. I don't even care if it's yellow. You can buy pink or blue, or you could just use a good old fashioned white spiral notebook, but you need something to write the shit going on in your head down on a piece of paper. Coffee break. Take a coffee break. Okay. Go get your coffee. Go get your water. Go get your seltzer. Go get a notepad. Go get something. Okay. And then get a pen. Make it your favorite pen. And you're going to write down what you're interested in. Okay. So four things. What am I interested in? Now, I studied journalism and marketing. And I'm telling you, I studied this for a reason. I had so many people ask me, oh, are you going to be a journalist? And my response would be, no, I'm not. And they would be like, what do you mean? You just studied journalism. Now, this is where what you learn in college and what you decide to do after college come together and join forces. Okay? I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I loved learning about journalism. I love communications. It was such an awesome field to study and to participate in. I loved the classes, but I don't want to go and be a journalist now. What am I going to do? This is what you're going to do. After you write down what you're interested in, you are then going to take the concepts, the ideas, the methods, the learning strategies, everything you basically learned in college, and you are going to take those tactics and you're going to apply it to something you're interested in. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. I was interested in fashion. Still am. I love fashion. Passion for fashion. Flowers, gorgeous. I have sparkly, fab fabulous shoes up there. You could see 
So I had to have a conversation with myself and say, how am I going to take what I learned in journalism and apply it elsewhere? This is what I did. If you guys are familiar with communications or a journalism major, you would know that reporters and journalists, number one, all right, they have to be on time. There is no deadline of like, five days it's like how fast can you turn the story around in five hours so that means i'm efficient and i'm aware and cautious of my time that's huge okay when you are applying to jobs they want to know is this candidate going to get x y and z done in a timely manner that's number one number two i also learned how to communicate effectively i learned when to speak and when to listen and that is so important number three ask effective and specific detailed questions now when you're a reporter okay and you're stu you're studying to be a journalist you don't just ask someone what's your favorite type of dessert or you could but that's a very general answer right i could say ice cream okay well what type of ice cream where's your favorite ice cream from do you like your ice cream is it dairy free is it vegan free is it carvel is it cold stone right i mean now we're really getting into specifics so I learned everything that my journalism classes had taught me and I applied it into the fashion industry. So I graduated college last year. And I mean, I don't have to go into like my whole, you know, journey and finding a job, but I will tell you that when I was interviewing, I used those same methods and tactics to get me where I wanted to be. I knew that if I wanted to be this person doing this job, I had to represent that in some way. Now, how are you supposed to do that? I have no experience. I just graduated college a month ago. This is how you do it. You fake it till you make it. So write that down. That's number two. So number one, what am I interested in? Number one and a half is literally writing down, comparing your list of what you're good at. Okay. Can you communicate effectively? Are you really good on the computer? Do you type really fast? Do you make phone calls really quickly? Like, what is it that you are good for? Like, what, like, what are you good at? What are you good at? You're selling yourself. That's like when people say to me, like, I'm not a good salesperson. Like, well, then you're not like good at what you're doing in life then. Cause anything you have to do, you have to sell yourself in an interview, right? You're selling, whether it's a product, a lip gloss, a software yourself, you got to know how to sell yourself. Cause no one knows how to sell yourself better than you. Okay, so number two, fake it till you make it. Yes, you need to write that down. Okay, what do I mean by that? Fake it till you make it. I mean, you are now going to go into this persona, into this person that you see on LinkedIn, into the job description. Okay, what does the customer relationship manager look like? What does the advisor look like? What do these positions that you want to go into, what does their job entail? All right. If you want to be a producer or if you want to, you know, be the president of the company, you have to assist and kind of mimic what that person is doing. Right. Like, what is your boss doing that you can learn from? And let me tell you something. If you don't want your boss's job, you're not in the right place. OK, let's focus, though. What do I mean by fake it till you make it? I mean, you have to literally go into this interview thinking you have what it takes to be this wholesale assistant. You have what it takes to be this client relationship manager. But all you're doing is you're basically combining everything you've now learned, whether it's jobs, internships, um, you know, shadowing someone, and you're really pulling it together and you're now telling it to the uh, employees of this job. You are your walking resume. You need to know your story inside and out because if you don't, no one will. Now, let's talk connections. That's number three on my list. Connections are a big one and I'll tell you why. Okay, you have to contact, I'm not kidding when I say this, like really, like when you're applying, you have to hone in and say, go through your contact list in your phone, go through your LinkedIn connections. If you are not up to date, up to date with your LinkedIn connections, that's fine. I mean, at least have a good photo. I just put a good photo on there, like not even a week ago, but really stalk, go through, take the time, spend the time, see who you have you know, mutual connections with, talk to your parents. You have no idea who knows who. When you're at a barbecue and your mom and dad invite you, go to the barbecue. Take two hours out of your day instead of hanging out with your girlfriends and going shopping, get your nails done, or going out on a date with that guy and meet the person you don't know at the other end of the table. Go get a drink, talk to them. Like you need to get interested. You need to get yourself acclimated and you need to open yourself up 
to new ideas and new possibilities because Frank, who's in the iTech industry or, you know, is a whiz at coding, may know nothing about the fashion industry or the teaching industry, but his sister's best friend may. And then there you go. Boom, you have a connection. So it's all about who you know, and then it's learning how to navigate and how to actually use those connections to your favor. So I like to use the 24 hour rule. All right. My dad used to do this a lot with me. End of my senior year at American, he was sending me left and right different connections. This person knows this guy, this guy knows this person, whether it was PR or marketing, it didn't matter. The rule of thumb was once my dad made the connection, okay, and a lot of people like my dad, they work around the clock. So my dad was sending emails 11 o'clock at night, 7 a.m., no matter what it was. I knew I had 24 hours from when that email jumped into my, my inbox to respond, whether I was interested or not. Because now someone may think of you. Someone may know, oh, Danielle, she was a journalism major. And this tiny little, you know, who knows news station is hiring a reporter. Even if I don't want the job, you have to let that person know out of courtesy and to be respectful. Because if you don't answer that email in 24 hours, they're not going to think of you. Why should they? You didn't answer. It's rude. So you need to really, really fake it till you make it. And I'm saying that because when you come across as a confident go-getter and you're interested and you want to learn and you're intrigued, then that person is going to want to help you so much more, right? Like, don't you ever notice how you like feel good when you like set someone up or, you know, you're talking to someone and you're like, oh, I really think this person would be good for you. And you do this and you do that. Everyone wants to help everyone, but they, you need to give them like an idea of how to do so. So this is how you're going to do it. Your five friends, you're all competing for jobs. Now, I'm not saying talk to them, but I am saying, especially girls in a sorority, you are going to reach out to your older, you know, sisters or friends or whatever in that sorority, call them. What's up? Hey, miss you. How are you doing? You know, keep those relationships. It's so important to foster those relationships even after, you know, those girls graduated. I remember my junior year, I met someone I'll never forget at like Cha Cha Macha in the city. And she only had 30 minutes and she was working for an amazing beauty company. And she was like, listen, Danielle, like, this is, this is the gig. Like, it's hard. This is what you're going to start doing. And she helped me and she got my resume through the door. It's all about who you know sometimes, you guys. So when you're sitting there on LinkedIn and Indeed and you're just like applying, it's not always going to work. I hate to say it. I think it could work and it does work and you can get lucky, but you also have to know someone. It doesn't hurt. Okay. So let's just wrap up for a second because we already have three out of our four things. Before I carry on, I want to really just make this bigger picture a little bit more condensed so it's not so overwhelming. Number one, what am I interested in, right? We wrote down what we're interested in. We wrote down what we're good at and we wrote down what we're passionate about that's going to get us up and out of the bed. Number two, fake it till you make it. You're interviewing now. You need to sell these people on who you are and why you're going to be the best fit for this job. Number three, connections. Who do you know? Who do I know from camp? Who do I know from that arts and crafts class I took back in 10th grade? Who do I know from, you know, music lessons? Who do I know from doing this internship on the hill or doing this job? It's all about who you know and then applying your skills and reaching out and seeing if they know anybody, right? So you're really now taking it, you're going up one level to who you know and now you're going up another level to how can they help you. And the fourth and most important thing that you do, you go on this interview, right? And they're asking you questions and they're making sure you're a good fit. And then you're in an interview. You want to be respectful. You want to dress well, the whole thing. But then you're going to flip, okay? And you are going to now ask them questions. When an interviewee asks you, do you have any questions for me? I don't care if you don't have any. You are going to brainstorm and you're at least going to have 10. You want to know why? Because out of those 10 questions... So he or she is probably going to answer five and you're going to have five left. And I'm not saying ask all of them. And I'm not saying ask, you know, what type of coffee do you have in the office? I'm saying ask strategic, smart questions. What's a day to day like? What's a day to day like in the office? Right. I mean, now it's a little different because of the pandemic. But what's working from home like? Do I clock in at 9 a.m.? Do we have virtual happy hour at 5 p.m.? How long have you been with the company? What is something that you're looking for in a candidate. You really want to get nitty gritty and ask specific questions. And you want to make sure that as much as they are interviewing you, you take at least five to 10 minutes at the end and you ask the questions that are important to you. 
you should know if it's a small or large company. If you don't, definitely ask that, you know, if it's, um, I don't know, a company that maybe is in different parts of the country, you know, say, is there going to be any traveling required? Am I based out of this office? You know, I'm looking to move to Florida in the next two years. Is there potential for me to maybe then transition down there? These are all important questions that you want to know because this is your job. This is your next journey and your next chapter of life. And it's all about you. So you really want to create and make it as best as possible for yourself. Because if you set yourself up first the right way, everything then just falls into the place. Does that make sense? At least you guys remember. Your first job is not your last job and your second job is not your last job and nothing is permanent, okay? I can't even get to tell you how many times myself or a friend has called me and they're like, Dan, I don't know what to do. I'm miserable. Get out. It is your first job. You are learning. It's a new experience. You have to be open-minded though. You definitely have to like, you know, say to yourself, okay, I'm walking in. I'll never forget like my first job I walked in to the office. I was like all dressed. Everyone was like so casual. You know, like you want to know like what's the vibe? Are people in suits? Are they in sundresses? Are they in, you know, you know, blazers and heels? Like what's everyone what's everyone's personality like? What's the culture like? So go in with an open mind and you guys are going to be amazing. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. My inbox is always open. I always try to answer within like 24 or 48 hours. Again, I'm Danielle, also known as Main Fashionista, and I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and tricks to help you navigate real world life after college. Have a great day. Bye.